In section 3.3, problem number 7, we're asked to find a pair of numbers, a pair of real numbers, A and B, whose sum is 200 and whose product is maximized. Now, uh, in order to apply the techniques that we've learned in this chapter, we need to have um, a function from a closed and bounded interval. So, we need, certain, we need to uh, restrict A and B to uh, numbers contained in some closed and bounded interval. Now, we want A and B, we want the sum of A and B to be 200 and the product to be maximized. If we want the product maximized, then we're going to want either both A and B positive or both A and B negative. But it really wouldn't make a lot of sense to have both A and B negative since then there's no way that their sum could be positive 200. So, we can safely take um, our interval i to be, um, have the left end point 0, and the right end point, if we're assuming both are positive and their sum is 200, well, then we can safely just say that both numbers have to be less than 200. So, uh, as far as, take, just to take care of the technical details, we can use this as our interval and just ensure that um, that the techniques learned in this chapter will, will actually work. All right, so now we can set up our equations. We know that um, a plus b must equal 200. And I'm going to write uh, product p equals, is equal to a times b. Remember, the product, that, product is the quantity that we're trying to maximize here. So let's rewrite, um, let's rewrite the first equation. And let's just solve for, say, A. Let's say A is equal to 200 minus B, which means that product, which is AB, is now equal to 200 minus B times B or negative b squared plus 200b. Now we can take the derivative with respect, with respect to b. So p prime b. Now we've written this as p as a function of b, so it's, we can take its derivative with respect to b. And this will be equal to negative 2b plus 200. Now, we want to find the critical points of this function. What are its uh, maximum uh, and minimum values? So we'll set this equal to 0 and solve for b. So see that b is going to equal negative 200 divided by negative 2 or just 100. Now, if b is equal to 100, then that means that a must be equal to 200 minus 100 or a, it's also 100. Now there's one technical detail that we do need, uh, do need to check, and that's that we actually need to check the values at the endpoints as well. Now in this case, it's pretty clear that um, the values we solve for a and b both equal to 100 is going to maximize the product. However, uh, we do need to check that we don't get a larger value if we take one of the endpoints. So we take, um, say, a equals, or b equals 0, well, then the product is just going to be 0. And similarly, if we take b is equal to 200, their sum has to be 200, so that means a is equal to 0, and again, the product is equal to 0. So we see that a equals 0 and, or a, excuse me, a equals 100 and b equals 100 are the numbers that will maximize the product and keep the sum at 200.